Part of this weekend up over in Wales, uh, as well as the, the hospital visit, is uh, running up and down some pretty serious sand dunes, I think all sort of roped together, so that's going to be quite key. It's starting to hit home exactly how big this challenge is going to be and how difficult this is. Uh, you know, we're only in, in Wales, okay, granted it's cold in January, at minus 50 in the North Pole, it's going to be a different story. <laughs> It's hard enough playing rugby down here, let alone up there. So, um, uh, no, fair play to them. Is obviously um, um, they're obviously very passionate about the the wooden spoon, and obviously them looking around the, the facilities today, and I think they know how hard they're going to have to work for, and, and, and how how worth it is really. One of the key things I wanted to do was actually come around the hospital to see where the money is actually going. This will be a big motivator for when we're actually out in the Arctic as well. Without Noah's Ark and people like the Wooden Spoon charity, we would be unable to provide anything. So I think with charitable funding from charities like the Wooden Spoon and Noah's Ark are essential for my team to do their job to enable children to come and play and enjoy themselves and feel a bit normal in an abnormal situation. And this is the biggest challenge we've ever gone after uh, with a wooden spoon. It's an amazing cause and it's, it's going to take a lot. So we've got to make it worthwhile, but you know, hanging out with these people and knowing where the money goes makes it, makes it worth it. So my life is punctuated by tours and by travel and experiences. And I expect this to be equal to anything I've ever done before. I'm proud of him because Wooden spoon support socially, mentally and disadvantaged children and young people right the way across the UK. So these funds will be put in to immediate use as soon as the, the challenge is finished. I'm extremely proud, very proud, very emotional about it all. I'm just really proud of everything. I couldn't be prouder. Not only have they challenged themselves out there in the Arctic, but they can come back and say I did that. Um, and that's what Wooden Spoon does. It brightens up the lives of young people that, that need our help. It's game on now and you know, we've got a huge challenge up against us. So thanks everyone for being behind us and uh, game on. So we're just about to board the plane to Ottawa for the Wooden Spoon Arctic Rugby Challenge 2015. We couldn't spot any polar bears out the window, but that's all you're imagining, just fields and fields of ice. Expectant, scared, yeah, definitely scared. Cameraman here, just about to feel the polar air. <laughs> and it's cold. It's not going to go further north, it's only going to get colder as well. Cold more. We're, everything's dictated here by the weather, and in Resolute at the moment, it's obviously uh, a lot of snow coming down and wind and the plane can't land so we're stuck here until they can get a plane up and we can actually land again until the weather changes. I, th I thought something like this was bound to happen to be fair, I didn't ha think it would happen as early. Saturday six people are going to be going up uh, and then the, f the rest of the group are going to be going up Sunday so you know, hopefully we'll all be up there ready to rock and roll by Sunday evening and uh, yeah okay it's a bit of a delay but these things happen. First we trek out today, we'll see how the kit works. I think we've walked so far about uh, a third of a mile and we've already realised that we've got too much clothes on and uh, we're going to have to strip off. Better to learn it now than when we're in minus 50 at North Pop. In he goes. Yeah. Found an igloo. That's the big turnout for the day. <laughs> well the boys feel a bit better now, morale's been lifted, we've done something. At least we've been out, just started to experience what it's going to be like. And now we're going out on uh, some uh, skidoos. Should be more fun. We've had a few technical issues. Everyone has abandoned us. Have a look around. <laughs> There's not a soul in sight. We've got no food. We've got no water. Our pets' heads are falling off. <laughs> if you could picture in your dreams what this place would look like, it's about here. <laughs> I, I only said it's great team building. Uh, we've had, a, you know, what, 
an idyllic place to be, having crap with your mates, buzzing around on skidoo. How you feeling, Fag? I'm, uh... Woohoo! I'm alright. It's freezing! This is what we came in for, today. This is where it really starts, eh, Jock? It is really where it starts. I've never heard the car so quiet on the way over here. People realising it is seriously cold. It is bleak out there. Uh, the atmosphere is completely different. This feels... Like a team room, it feels like we used to call it the war room. I mean, we're not here on a tourist trip. We're not going out there and having someone do everything for us and just ruck up at the pole and play a match. We're getting involved in all the prep work. We have to do logistics-wise. We've got to make sure we've got everything for our tent because we will be relying on ourselves and our tent buddies. Uh, if someone who's been doing it for 20 years can nearly lose his fingers in two or three minutes. Essentially, the message that came across was if you're not on your money, you are going to do yourself some serious harm. put me on an intravenous drip and certainly I will not be going up to walking up the pool with the, the guys. It'd just be brilliant to have him as part of this trek because he's been here from the off and to lose him at the last hurdle is pretty disappointing for everyone. What's important is the game itself and uh, we have all the capability of uh, and the good leadership to be able to get the guys to the pool. He's still our leader. He's brought us in and introduced us to a few of the guys that know what they're doing thankfully. Steve, what's your uh, okay. what's your favourite thing about this environment? I feel very privileged to be here and also to share this amazing um, environment. I have huge respect for it. I've seen it at its best, at its balmiest, but I've also seen it at its cruelest. And it can be terribly cruel, and it can be horrible, and it can be the last place you possibly want to be on earth and then it can suddenly show its beauty with a still evening and colors of purple and orange and pink it's a it's a beautiful wonderful place but this also can be a horrible cruel sinister place we're the last place you want to be on earth so i enjoy the the contrast yeah of both of them you know? <laughs> Blooming excited. That's yeah. all I can say. Ready to go. That thing's gonna take us this thing all the way to the North Pole. This thing is gonna take you all the way to the North Pole. Uh, feels like the Hunger Games, but we've been dropped in by <laughs> our reality TV show Reno. So we've made it here. We've made the flight. It's unbelievably glorious. <laughs> Day nine, we've touched down 70 miles from the North Pole, ready to rock and roll. Pretty undulating, difficult terrain. And backs are all aching tonight, and we've still got four more days, and we've got a game of rugby to play. No, the only time we got to sleep was when the time they said it's time to get up. And that was like, they were all chipper this morning saying they had a great night's sleep. Early on when we were out on the ice, you know, it's quite a lonely old thing up there. No one really comes to talk to you and you do things, you're just battling and you can hear the fault behind. Um, and that's about it, you know, and so you're, you're making your decisions um, and you hope everyone kind of goes with them. Ah. So I get tired now. It's very hard to describe just how hard this is. I'm in at about 45 degrees, pulling a 60 kg sledge over broken rubble. Been walking for nearly five hours now. So we've now hit. It's the end of day three, and uh, we're exhausted. just have to keep reminding yourself why you're here and what you're doing you know 
we are ordinary people doing an extraordinary thing to help benefit socially, mentally and physically disadvantaged children for Wooden Spoon and that's what kind of drives you on. The boys have dragged everything up here um, and now it's about sort of getting out there and playing the game. I've seen a few icy patches. Obviously I've got to give it the referee uh, check a bit later on and, and uh, hopefully the pitch is uh, playable. But special group of people that we've trekked up here and set the Guinness World Record with. Yeah, the camaraderie that's been shown um, has been phenomenal. It's been a, a brilliant experience from start to finish. Even better that it's for a fantastic charity. <laughs> This great big chat about not wanting to win. <laughs> no, but but mate, when it matters, it matters. We're standing at the North Pole. Yeah. We've just set a Guinness World Record. We're officially world record holders. And how does it feel? Mate, massively proud and uh, exhausted at the same yeah. time. I'm knackered. It's been, I mean, five, was it, five days walking here. It's pretty tough. Um, and then playing a game of rugby out on that was, you know, impossible. But we made it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're very proud, aren't we, kids? Yeah! Very proud, and I know he's going to be really pleased to be back, but really proud as well. Immensely proud of everything he's achieved. It's been fantastic. This is what it's all about. Um, the real value of all those uh, golf days and bike rides and going to the Arctic comes down to this. It's an amazing sort of farm inside a special needs school in rugby. And um, chatting to the head, he said it couldn't have happened if it hadn't been for money raised by the wooden spoon. We do this because we can, and, and when you come to projects like this, it, it makes me really proud and pleased that I've done what I've done and I'll keep on doing. So uh, thanks to everybody that sponsored me and everybody else. And if you can, I think it's called seeing as believing. And uh, I'm seeing and believing right now. <laughs>